Hey guys, my name is Aldas, and in today's video, I'm going to be doing my review from race four of the 2019 W series at the Norris Ring. Now, as I said in my previous W series video, which was a review of race three from Misano, I'm going to be covering the rest of the 2019 W series season. Now, I think I said this in the previous video as well. I wasn't able to cover the first two uh, races because I was doing exams at the time when the season started. So yeah, it's a little bit annoying to start reviewing the series two races in or three races in, but nonetheless, that's sadly how it's gonna have to be now in this video I'm going to be talking about the big highlights in the race and the racing I think from the Norris ring uh, there was quite a bit of criticism online about the track it's a very short track and yet perhaps the racing in this race wasn't as good as say in Zolder or Misano but in terms of what this race has done for the championship, I think it's been a real positive. As I'll say later on, we have a brand new winner and a very uh, young winner as well at that. And it just closes things up at the top and definitely makes the championship more exciting as we head into the final two races. Next in Ascent and then finally at Brands Hatch for the season closer. Anyway guys, if you do enjoy the content on this channel and want to support the channel, don't forget to like, subscribe, all of that good stuff. And check out my social medias, Instagram and Twitter will be above. But yeah. Let's get into it. So guys, it was Marta Garcia who took the race win and it was from pole to flag. A brilliant victory, a very dominant victory and it is her first of the 2019 W Series Championship at only 18 years old. So yeah, brilliant victory and I'll definitely be getting onto her a little bit later on. She had a fantastic race and to complete the podium, it was Baitskavissa and Championship Leader Jamie Chadwick. Now further down the field, there was also a very, very close battle between Fabian Volvend and the returning Emma Kimmelainen. She had a brilliant brilliant race and arguably was probably driver of the day considering how her season is uh, uh, panned out. So yeah, I'll also definitely be talking about her a little bit later on as well. Once again, it was another very good race by Miki Koyama and also Tasmin Pepper as well. Now, these two have scored points in every single race so far, but they seem to be in a bit of a no man's land because they aren't quite able to challenge the top five or the top four or any of the podium runners. And they are the only people to score points in every single race and not get a podium so far. So that's definitely something for them to progress to. But nonetheless, that's still a very impressive achievement to score points in every single race. And yeah, it just shows their consistency. And to complete the points in 10th, scoring her second, point of the season is Naomi Sheaf. Now this race also had a few incidents there and there and definitely some angry drivers. Now Redest, who did finish the race, she actually had a bit of front wing damage and it was sort of dangling on the front of her car, but she managed to carry on in the points. And to be honest, her pace, considering the damaged car in the front wing just sort of dangling off, was actually really impressive. I mean, she was keeping up with the person in front of her and yeah, it was quite amazing actually to drive that much of a damaged car with that much aero being affected. It was a really good job, but she was given the black and orange flag, which meant that her car was wasn't safe but as she came into the pits not only did she have to change her front wing but she also sped in the pit lane and got a penalty as well for that drive through so yeah her weekend just went from bad to worse and as far as the non-finishers we had three with Jessica Hawkins, Alice Powell and Sarah Moore. Now, as far as Alice Powell, a very, very frustrating uh, race for her. She had to start at the back of the grid and actually was running really well. Did a lot of overtaking and was running inside the points. With eight minutes to go, she had a fuel injection problem and had to pit and retire. And that is massively frustrating for her because she's already scored two podiums in uh, the 2019 W Series Championship. Second at Hockenheim and then third in Zolder. And then in Masano was right at the front of the grid until she got tangled up in a first lap collision I mean right at the front so she would have been on the podium or at least fighting for the podium for sure and then once again not scoring in this race I mean sadly the luck has just not been with her but she would have been a title contender for sure but sadly it was not her day now, moving into the big highlights, and there is no other place than to start with our race winner, Marta Garcia. Now, she had a fantastic race, absolutely dominated, did not look for a second like uh, either Jamie Chadwick or uh, Baitska Vista could have challenged her. She literally just led every single lap from pole position, had a really good start. The lights went out really quick, so the drivers had to be on alert. And I mean, she won by over three and a half seconds. At one point, she had almost a five second gap, but then got caught up in a little bit of traffic. And again, only 18 years old. She's won her first ever race. And she's been really impressive actually this season. I mean, she impressed with an early podium in Hockenheim and then has just been scoring very solid and consistent points as well. And now with this win, she really becomes an outsider for the championship. And I really do mean an outsider. I mean, it's going to be very difficult for her to win it, but... 
I mean, in the last two races, she needs at least another win and definitely a double podium score in these last two races. But nonetheless, I think for a teenager, 18 years old, she's had a brilliant debut season, whatever happens. And yeah, as far as today, an absolutely stunning win. No one could challenge her. And yeah, brilliant race. Now, further down the field, it was the two main championship protagonists, Jamie Chadwick and Baitska Visser, to complete the podium, with Baitska Visser finishing in front of title leader Jamie Chadwick. Now, I think it's fair to say that Jamie Chadwick had a bit of a disappointing race, I think, especially considering that her title rival, Bites Kavissa, who started in fifth when Jamie Chadwick started in second, managed to finish in front of her. You know, Bites Kavissa had a brilliant start. Once again, starting in fifth, by the end of the first lap, she was in second, and these two, they were fighting the entire way throughout the race. And, you know, Jamie looked like she might have had a little bit more pace, but not enough to overtake. She tried to pile on the pressure onto Bites Kavissa, but, I mean, Bites Kavissa just absolutely just stood strong, made no mistakes, and with that finish, finishing in front of Jamie Chadwick, closes the gap just a little bit in the championship, definitely making it more interesting heading into the final two rounds. Now, further down the field, I mean, a massive shout out for driver of the day has to be Emma Kimelainen. Now, she finished about six tenths behind Fabian Volven, but these two are fighting the entire way. And I mean, as far as Emma Kimelainen, the reason why this is so impressive, just remember, she started right at the first race, but got knocked out three corners, basically, into her W Series debut uh, by Megan Gilks. And since then, she hasn't been able to race due to some health issues, so she's missed three three races already. She's missed, obviously, uh, Hockenheim being crashed out, then Zolder and Misano as well. So this is her first proper race, really, where we've actually been able to see her race. And to finish fifth, you know, fifth place on basically her debut... I mean, yeah, an absolutely fantastic race. And she was chasing down Fabian Volven. I think with more laps, perhaps she could have uh, got in front. But nonetheless, that is still a brilliant finish. And it just sort of makes me think, if she was there, you know, if she didn't have uh, uh, the crash with Megan Gilks, and if she didn't miss those races, where would she be in the championship? You know, I mean, fifth on your first, basically, race. Yeah, that was amazing. And I really do hope that we are able to see more and more of her because I think she will be really, really impressive. Now, guys, that's my look at the big highlights in the race, but let's take a look at the championship standings after the first four races. So, like I said, it is still Jamie Chadwick leading at the top of the leaderboard, but due to Bytskovisa finishing in front of her, it has closed up a little bit. It is now only a 10-point gap, which is still quite a sizable gap, really, considering how many races are left, but you never really know how things are going to turn out. I do still think that it is Visser and Chadwick for the title. Definitely one of these two. I think at the moment, as we sit here today, I mean, I still think Jamie Chadwick has to be the favourite for the title, especially considering the fact that the final race of the season in Brands Hatch, I mean, that's got to be a very strong circuit for Jamie Chadwick. She, She's had a lot of racing experience around there. She's won titles around there. She has done racing with Aston Martin around there. And when the pressure's on, on the final race of the season... I seriously think she's going to come in clutch and win that race. And that'll be and that'll be pretty much the end of the championship as far as I'm concerned. So, yeah, I do still think she is still the favourite. But you never know what's going to happen. I mean, if she has a bad uh, race in Assen and doesn't finish and maybe Marta Garcia wins again, I mean, that would just flip the championship completely. So you never know what's going to happen. And further down the table, I mean, again, that sort of upper midfield fight between Miki Koyama, Sarah Moore and Tasman Pepper, that's going to be a very good one to watch. Again, I think these drivers are just a little bit below being able to get podiums, but Miki Koyama has been, in my opinion, very impressive so far. Again, her qualifyings haven't been so good, but I don't think she's actually lost any places so far in the races. So, yeah, definitely uh, impressive there. And one more time before we do finish this video, I have to say, again... Emma Kimelainen, if you look at the championship, she's had one race, basically, finishing in fifth place and has already jumped half the field. So once again, I repeat myself, where would her season be if she didn't miss the first three races? You know, I guess we never know, but uh, it definitely sets us up, I think, for a very good uh, sort of next season of the W Series when the drivers have more experience, are a lot more fresher, probably don't make as many mistakes. And uh, yeah, I think the championship will be even closer next season. But of course, we still have to uh, finish this season. So yeah, I cannot wait for that. Like I said, the next race is in Assen. And once again, I will be reviewing it. And I hope you guys do watch it because I am loving the W Series in 2019, really enjoying it. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys have uh, discovered it and maybe are enjoying it too. Uh, but anyway, guys, there you go. That is my review from race four of the 2019 w series at the norris ring now don't forget if you guys do enjoy the content on this channel then like subscribe all of that good stuff don't forget to check out my social medias instagram and twitter will be above and don't forget to uh, check out my uh, race review from the previous race at race three at masano and i will see you in the next one bye guys